Hello and welcome. I am Jennifer Cooper, strategy lead for media and entertainment here in Microsoft, coming to you live from my kitchen, also the control room via Microsoft Teams. Thank you so much for joining me today during these unprecedented times. This is the first episode of a series focused on challenges and opportunities for media and entertainment customers. Throughout the series, we're going to talk with industry leaders, technical experts, and customers, specifically around latest innovations in editing in the cloud, visual effects, distribution, and we'll touch on the future of the newsroom. For our first episode, we're going to be focusing on some of the most pressing issues studios and broadcasters face today, remote editing. We're going to meet product leaders from Avid and Teradici, two of the most recognizable brands in our industry. We're going to spend a few minutes getting a technical deep dive in editing in the cloud. And we're going to hear from a creative director behind some of the most notable shows in television. And now, without further ado, please help me welcome Colleen Smith, Vice President of Marketing Solutions from Avid, as well as Tara Dici's Vice President of Product Management and Marketing, Ziad Lamam. We're delighted that you are both able to join us. Colleen, you know, Avid is such a staple name in media and entertainment, especially in, in video and editing. How has the current situation been different for you as you respond to your customers? A lot of the customers and, and the phone calls we got were, here's my situation, how can you help me? I think the first thing we did was just say, all right, if you have people working from home, here's all the free licenses that you need. Because we didn't want people worrying about, oh, do they have an access? Do they have a need for a different license because they're now working from home? First and foremost was, get them everything they need. And then now I think after, those were the first few weeks and I think we delivered hundreds of thousands of licenses, just get people going. Now we're at a different point. I think people are really saying, okay, if this is the new normal, right? What do I need to make sure that I can continue to collaborate? How do I make sure that I'm driving and doing what I need to do to keep the business going? Right. And that's where a lot of our support is coming right now. And that's where our customer care folks are just making sure we're there to support our customers. Ziad, Teradici has been in the business of virtualization and secure workstations. And I'm, I'm sure you support multiple industries. But during this uh, challenging time, how are you finding media and entertainment customers either asking you for different workloads or asking you different questions? How are you finding the response to that? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, you know, what we've found and in being in the industry for a long time, focusing on delivering uh, remote workloads uh, to artists and content creators and video editors, really the, the same three kind of tenants have stuck around, which is you have to do it securely. Um, you have to have a really great user experience that yeah. editors and artists will accept. And you know you have to do it in a way that um, will be uh, cost sensitive and using the infrastructure in the best way that it that it can be used. What's happening now is really that sense of urgency has exploded. So yeah. basically, taking those sort of same requirements that we focused on before, yeah. and now kind of moving to helping customers do that in a more urgent fashion. That's that's really interesting. And Colleen, how do you see post COVID all of these things continuing to become the way production is actually going to evolve? Yeah, I, I think, you know, that both of you are right. I, I, what we're already seeing is a little bit of a shift in terms of the way in which people were looking in, at uh, at legacy infrastructure, if you will, with a shift more towards the cloud or looking at these remote access capabilities. You know, while COVID might have caused the need more um, sooner rather than what people were originally thinking. I think what they're also realizing though is this is something that needs to happen because remote or this distributed production environment 
was starting to happen anyways because of the shift to digital. And so now what we're seeing is, okay, maybe things that people were thinking, oh, that'll be another year, two years, three years. The time at which it's happening has kind of shrunk. And so now they're looking at it today because of this terrible pandemic, but it's almost just changing the time frame. Yeah, you know, as we wrap up here, I'd love a a very quick wish from both of you to yourselves a year from now. Ziad, if you're, um, you know, Ziad in April 2021, what would you give yourself as advice? You know, I, I think for me going through this personally and being in a position to help so many Um, so many artists out there, really it's to be prepared for whatever comes next and to Mm kind of learn from this experience uh, that we are all being faced with. And, you know, um, kind of, it's been amazing to see not just our industry, but other industries use technology in a work from home environment. So I would say, you know, now's the time to dive in and really focus on, making sure you have that platform for uh, your artists and and really just go all in because the technology is there, it's secure, it can it can uh, provide, you know, what you need to be productive. So um, I'd like us to be doing more of this in a year from yeah. now. And, you know, to be honest, I still want to go in the office as well. I think the balance is important and it's almost become necessary as opposed to... Yeah. Having it be something that there's an option, there's a choice, and it actually is enabling us to do our work more efficiently, to be able to collaborate where and when and how we need to. And I think with the amount of content that's being consumed and created these days, we need more of that flexibility. So hopefully what this is doing is providing that agility. You know, all these things we've been talking about, and and obviously Microsoft's been talking about for a long time, the value of the cloud. Hopefully a year from now, people have realized that true benefit and they're seeing that it's not all one way or all the other way. It's probably some hybrid of the way we used to work versus how we all think we could and should work. And I think, you know, as the ad has just said, hopefully this is, has become the new normal, but we're looking and utilizing technology to address what our business requirements are and we're solving problems, which is really what technology should be doing, right? It's enabling us to work smarter, faster, better, you know, as opposed to doing things the same old way. Mm -hmm. You're you're both absolutely right. I'm really grateful you were able to share your time with us today. And I hope as you know, the the months continue and we experience our new work environment. Everybody uh, continues to stay safe, uh, to be well. And I look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Thank you again for your time today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Terajici is offering short-term licenses through June 30th, 2020. To learn more, just go to the website on your screen. And the beauty of Edit On Demand is that we can stand it up in a couple of hours. If employees are remote, how do they work and access private company files easily and securely? The way we connect to our desktops and applications is changing. That's where Teradici Cloud Access Software and the PCOIP protocol capabilities come in. Teradici invented PCOIP and it is the technology underlying cloud access software. The software enables secure, high-performance access to desktops and applications from anywhere. PCOIP provides users with remote access to on-premises or cloud-based virtual machines as secure and easy-to-manage alternatives to local computers. PCOIP compresses, encrypts, and transmits only pixels to an end-user's display providing a full fidelity user experience and a highly secure environment. At Teradici, we create solutions that enable organizations to securely and seamlessly deliver full desktop and workstation experiences to their employees. We're solving the problem of how to remotely access hosted applications and desktops while maintaining an amazing user experience. You won't even know you're using a virtual desktop. 
connect to your virtualized data and workstation from wherever you are. No need to upload and download large files. Only encrypted pixels are ever transferred. Cloud Access Software is a multi-cloud solution that supports Windows or Linux desktops and applications with the major cloud providers and on-premises data center environments. For IT professionals, built-in features enable you as an administrator to automate provisioning, manage compute costs, and broker secure connections using Cloud Access Manager. These secure connections can be made using a variety of devices, PCUIP0 clients, thin clients, or other desktop and mobile devices with the support of a PCUIP software client. Turn to Teradici to efficiently and securely deliver virtual desktops and applications to a modern workforce. Run even the most graphics-intensive applications on a powerful virtual workstation and securely connect to it from any device, anywhere, using Teradici Cloud Access software. We're here to help you accomplish your IT business objectives. And welcome back to the control room. For the next few minutes, we're going to shift gears a bit and take a deep dive into remote editing. For that conversation, I'm delighted to introduce Avid's chief cloud solution architect, Richard Duke, and formerly from Avid, and now with Microsoft, Tim Murphy, Principal Program Manager in Azure Media. Welcome, gentlemen, take it away. Hi, Richard, great to see you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Thanks, Tim, great to see you too, thank you. Good, hey, so in that previous segment, we heard Colleen and Ziad speak about, uh, you know, edit on demand and edit in the cloud uh, environments. What are some of the technical considerations that our customers should think about prior to deploying edit on demand specifically? So as we meet with customers, one of their biggest concerns is how long is it going to take to get this up and running? And, uh, and the beauty of Edit On Demand is that we can stand it up in a couple of hours. Uh, we're working hard to get that down to minutes, but today it's a couple of hours. The second question that they always ask is, how do I get my content up into the environment? Um, I, I see the wonderful value of editing in the cloud, but I need to get access to my content. So another component of Edit On Demand is the upload portal. So that can be from a studio where we're uploading the content from an existing on-prem storage environment, or it can be the editor working from home. It could be edit, um, uploading from a set. You know, in many cases, uh, the content is being shot at one location, edited in a different location, and uh, and we have the ability through the through our uh, portal to be able to upload the content straight into the cloud uh, from the editor's home, from the studio lot, or from a, a remote production site. Can you talk to us a little bit about how complicated it is to set up these type of workflows that we've explored with Avid and Teradici through our partnership? Yeah, the wonderful thing is the the workflows are very straightforward. It's giving an access, giving access to an editor to be able to connect to the media composer from wherever they are, um, and and you know that ability. What what we enable with Avid, Microsoft, and Teradici together is to give the editor a great experience uh, working from home, and that can be a one screen, two screen, three screen experience. Um, and 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 let the editor be creative as if they're in an edit suite at a at a major studio. Tell us a little bit about your technical experience, Richard, and the conversations you have with with our clients. Yeah, so uh, you know, in every with every client, we need to start with that kind of session that we envision what their challenges are and what they would like to do. Um, so so in some cases. It's a very small post-production facility, and they need the ability to add uh, a couple of editors to, to work from home or to work from a remote production site. Um, and, uh, and in others, it's they're a very large enterprise, and they have hundreds of editors uh, that they have now taken and, and are working from home or working from different geographical locations. So we can start at a very, very basic uh, level with Edit On Demand, and we can grow up to meet the needs of the, of the world's largest enterprise um, media companies. You know, and give us an idea, Richard, of, of kind of the technical hurdles perhaps that our clients need to, to consider when engaging in an edit in the cloud environment. And can you talk about some of the options that our, our customers could consider? So, uh, so latency always does come up, as does bandwidth, 
right? Especially now that we have many editors that are working from home, uh, they're concerned. Is the Are the editors going to have a good experience working from home? You know, what we have found is that editors can actually have a really great experience on home internet. It doesn't require having a massive pipe. Um, and, and they can, you know, have 40, 50 milliseconds of latency and still have a wonderful experience. You know, the other challenge is how much data they need to move. Um, you know, th- with with major productions, you know, using 40, 50 terabytes of content uh, for a show and needing 10 or 20 editors uh, connected to it, uh, it's, it's, it's a challenge of how do we get that content up into the environment so that editors can work. The other thing, though, that we can do is we can uh, we can limit the access to uh, to what people could pull down. So in some cases, the the uh, the clients are concerned about the editors being um, being too constrained at home or that they want them to be constrained and not being able to download the content and take the content away and things like that. So there are a number of hurdles and we can we can set the environment up uh, to meet the, the requirements on the security side, on the performance side, and, and ultimately on the, the throughput uh, side and, and being able to um, you know, help, help the storytellers tell the stories. What are some of the tricks of the trade from Richard Duke's toolbox that you, you know, advise our customers to consider a, you know, from a networking perspective, um, you know, some of our partners? Working from a major studio lot that has a lot of content, uh, you know, they're going to need to, to, be, to be able to, to move a lot of content. Uh, of course, that content moves extremely fast if they put in Express Route. Um, which is a direct connection to the cloud, uh, then they can just really pump the content up into the cloud very, very fast. Uh, so, so the other part of this is that it, it can be deployed as needed around the world. So if you're shooting in London, but editing in Los Angeles, uh, you know we can put services inside of London uh, to get the content uploaded, but the editor could be in New York or could be in Amsterdam or could be in Georgia. I love to say that technology reduces geography to zero, but I also got to imagine, you know, in addition to being able to upload and move content around the world at, you know, a fairly rapid rate compared to how we've behaved in the past, I got to imagine it's more secure as well, right, Richard? And what, talk to us a little bit about some of the work we've done around security and how uh, you know, a cloud environment can help enable a more secure environment, particularly to how we used to do work. Yes, of course. Uh, you know, the major studios are accustomed to having their editing environment be an island. You know, completely seg- segregated from the internet. You know, having no access from the outside for people coming in. And the truth is, we can make the cloud environment just as secure, if not more so. Um, and and so the, the studios are concerned about can I trust this environment? Uh, so we so we designed edit on demand. And we designed our as a service platform with security in mind from the very beginning. So so we work very closely with uh, with the studios with the IT departments to make sure that we're setting it up um, to meet the the needs of the of that particular studio or production facility to meet their security requirements, but also ensuring that the cloud environment is a secure environment and uh, and we can open it as much as they need to or we can keep it completely closed uh, based on their their needs and, and and requirements so faster more secure global reach and collaboration it sounds like a real win richard uh, you know we've done a lot of work together to create best practices and documentation where can some of our customers go to learn more Yes, of, of course, they can come to avid.com and uh, and sign up for Edit On Demand. And there's a great deal of documentation and the how-to uh, right there. But we've also put a great deal of our deployment guides uh, uh, onto GitHub. And they can go there to learn um, more about uh, about the solution and about the growth of the, of the solution and the different components that can be added to the solution and things like that. That's great, Richard. Well, I want to thank you for your time. It's great to see you, and I'm glad that you're doing safe. Thank you. Great to see you too, Tim. Appreciate it. Richard and Tim, that was outstanding. Thank you so much for being part of the control room. If you're interested in learning more about Avid Edit On Demand and its early access program, just go to the link on your screen. But we don't have to be here. What other kind of talent is out there? What other kind of opportunities are out there? The Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, just moments ago announced the country will go into a complete lockdown. 
most staff will be working from home. Corona happened. Every edit suite in the building that's currently running needs to be out and about and being installed in everyone's house. To be honest, I don't think I've ever done anything quite like this. Gorilla TV has been going for about 20 years now in Cardiff. We have three sites. We now have around about 100 avid systems. We pretty much uh, do all genres of post. So Avid approached us with a, a new facility they have, Edit On Demand, which is basically cloud editing and cloud nexus storage all combined into one service. So we did a, a week's demo, thought it was a fantastic new product, absolutely brilliant. Little did we know we'd actually be using it for real, thanks to Corona. We needed editors to work remotely, quickly. Everything pretty much happened in a week. We had lots of our clients just asking for us to move to editors' homes. And Avid Edit On Demand from a technical aspect was no different really than any one of our edit suites here. The editors didn't know that the Nexus was in the cloud. They actually thought they were remotely accessing into our system on-prem. They said the responsiveness and the power and flexibility it gave them to do their edits pretty much anywhere they wanted. Connecting to Edit On Demand was easy and straightforward. It's lightning fast. In Wales and the UK in general, we don't have that great connectivity at home, yet everything works very well with the technology that we're using. We need to collaborate without geographical boundaries. I would definitely recommend Edit On Demand. You forget that it's a virtual PC. You forget that you're streaming media from the cloud. It's fantastic. From a remote working point of view, I can't think of any other facility that does what Edit On Demand does as well as it does. And welcome back to the control room. Thank you for joining us. You've heard some really great technical overviews from Avid and Teradici, our great partners. And now to tell you how it's really done on the ground is Ed Cervetas, Creative Director from Burnish Creative. Ed, we are so delighted you're here. Welcome. How are you faring? Thank you for asking. I think I'm personally okay and professionally hanging in there too. Um, tell us a little bit about what you guys do at Burnish Creative and some of the really awesome shows that you support. We are a uh, post-production creative house. We do uh, The Mass Singer. We do America's Got Talent. We have worked wow, with, cool. with American Idol. You, you and I had a, a conversation about what happened right before everything went virtual. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, I was editing The Mass Singer. We were fortunate enough that everything was shot. Um, everything was ingested. It was all brought into the server. We were finishing up editing the season. The thought of not finishing the season on one day was not even an option in our mind. Right. 24 hours later, it was a reality. And how did you get them equipped to work, continue to work? Because I think you send them all home. How, how were they equipped to do that? We knew we had to do something. Like I said, there was no way that we were not going to finish the season. We had exactly. to finish the season. It's a hit show. We need to turn right now. Well, how do we do this? How do we get people to go home and all of us still work in a group? Uh, we looked at remote editing and we found a system that would work for us that would allow everyone to remote in to a computer that was at a data center that was then connected to our server where all the media was. Okay, now we gotta get people at home with some type of receiver so they can see the computer that is in the server room. Round the clock, the staff was just, we were, we were installing software, testing the software, testing the connection, prepping the machine, go, put it over here, put it in this room, and just started sending people away with these computers to go to their home. You know, it's yeah. here's this big, beautiful facility behind me. We're a hotel. That's what Burnish is. We are a hotel. We bring your production. Come in. We're going to take care of you. We're going to set you up. Yeah. Our home is now your home. Well, now it became, here, take this and get the hell out of here. Here's our equipment. Yeah. Go. 
this whole idea of of remote production, remote post production, ha- has been kind of, you know, on the tip of the tongue for a while. But but producers and production companies, for for security reasons, for logistical reasons, have shied away from it. Now the hand was forced for producers, for production companies to okay. Now we have to do it. So as we wrap up, um, I I think. What I'm hearing you say, kind of as a as a parting thought, remote work is going to be part of our lives in editing and in content creation all all over the world. And you know, is it going to be the only mechanism by which we work? I'm hearing you say maybe not, but it's definitely going to have a front and center place in how editing continues to evolve post COVID. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. It all depends on the size of the media, of course. The, right. the, the, the thing is, is media is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and more and more manageable. We're not there yet. Um, but we don't necessarily have to be here. It's nice to be here. It's a nice place. But we don't have to be here. What other kind of talent is out there? What other kind of opportunities are out there? Are there programs in... Japan? Are there programs in India? Are there programs in, in you know, Europe that need our support? And likewise, are there other talent that is out there in other remote areas of the world that we can collaborate with in the projects that we have here? So remote work really takes on a global perspective, doesn't it? You know, there are certain times in history where things happen that changes the course of uh, of Everything. how we do things, yeah. and uh, this is very much one of them. Yeah, we really appreciate having you in the control room. Thank you so much for your time, Ed. Thanks, Jen. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. If you'd like to see if you're eligible for a free six-month Office 365 E1 trial, including Microsoft Teams, just visit the website on your screen. And this brings us to a close. Can't thank you enough for joining us in the control room today. All of the content in today's show is available on our website, and you'll find more details about the solutions we discussed in this episode. We also invite you to join us for our next episode as we reveal what may be in the future of the newsroom and the technologies that are being developed. That's it. Signing off. From the control room, I am Jen Cooper.